Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and today an overdue video, overdue review and I'm talking about the review of all these helical antennas, 5.8 gigahertz helical antennas. Now I've got a few here, I've got four actually, uh, they come from various sources, uh, some are commercial products like this which uh, circular wireless and I've mentioned that one before, I've used it before, it seems to work very well but we'll quantify things today. Then I've got this which was uh, from a UK guy, he sent this in, another one from another person sent this in, links to all of these things or at least details will be in the description of this video so you can go and have a look and see what I'm talking about. So there we go, this is about a, what's this one here, let's have a look, um, count it, one, two, three turn helical, and this is a one, two, three, four, five turn helical. So you'd expect this to have not quite so much range as this, or so much gain as this. And uh, but of course, there's more to a helical antenna than the number of turns. There's the accuracy, the precision in with which with, with which it is made. There's also the matching network because you can't just get a piece of copper wire, twist it in a loop in a little coil, and expect it to work. It has to be matched to the cable and that cable has to be matched to the receiver. So there's quite a few things here that need to be looked at. And of course circular wireless, you know, um, how many turns is this? There's quite a big one, this one. One, one two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it's a seven turn, seven, nearly eight turn helical. It's actually about seven and a half by the look of it. Yeah, okay. Um, eight turn, eight turn helical. So, and look at the different construction techniques. We've got uh, kind of a, an, an acrylic, what was it? acrylic, clear plastic acrylic, um, form to hold the copper wire and this is an enameled copper wire so it's not going to oxidize and it's got a solid aluminium base plate by the look of it. I mean that's quite rugged, quite strong, quite good. This one's been made using a piece of circuit board, bit of fiberglass circuit board. It has uh, again an acrylic former and it has, I don't think, I think that wire is, not sure if that wire is actually enameled or not. And then we've got this one here which is made from plywood, CNC cut plywood with a, again a PC board base on the bottom and that wire again I'm not sure if it's um, enameled or not stop corrosion but my one concern with this is that this wood here is going to absorb moisture especially in the winter if you're out flying and it starts raining then the amount of moisture absorbed by this wood could affect the performance of this particular helical we may check that see if it makes a difference um, ideally you'd want to uh, lacquer that or varnish it or whatever so that it's not going to get you know, moisture in it, which upsets things, because 5.8 gigahertz is very susceptible to things like moisture in the air and around it, it can detune it. Um, if you've ever flown 5.8 gigahertz FPV and you've tried to fly into a cloud, you'll know what I mean, because the moment the model enters the cloud, generally speaking, the video just disappears. The, the moisture in the cloud or the fog or whatever soaks up that signal so rapidly that you get virtually nothing coming back on your receiver. So. Of course, the big question I had is, how am I going to test these? Now, I've got my spectrum analyzer, which would be the ideal way to do it, or an antenna analyzer, a network analyzer, but my spectrum analyzer only goes up to three gigahertz. And of course, we're talking 5.8 gigahertz. Now, a, five, a spectrum analyzer that'll go way up to 5.8 gig or more costs far more money than I have. So I won't be able to use the spectrum analyzer. So what I've decided to do, just be a bit tangential about this, just, I've got one of these RC305 receivers, and of course this has an RSSI output, Received Signal Strength Indicator, RSSI. So what I'm going to do is measure the signal strength from the RSSI as I try the different antennas. So we'll be able to get at least a relative comparison between each antenna, which is producing a stronger signal than the other. Now it's not going to be, if we had a spectrum analyzer, it would be calibrated, we'd know exactly how many decibels of gain and things. Can't do that with a setup, but we, I can tell you which has got the most gain, but it's not all about gain, because there's also the beam width. Now if you saw my video some time ago about how high gain antennas work, um, you'll know that the higher the gain, generally the narrower the beam. So what I'll be doing is comparing the three turn with the five turn with the seven turn to see just what difference that's making to the beam, or the width of that beam that the antenna is producing. So you know, there's always a compromise. If you just want to go a little bit further, but you want reasonably good coverage in a, a smaller helical may be a better option. Three turn may be better than a, a nine or eight turn because you won't be able to fly out the beam so, outside the beam so easily. So there's all these things to consider. I'll try and quantify all the different factors, put them together, and hopefully you'll still be awake at the end of this video. Okay, to give you an idea of how this RSSI thing works, here is the receiver here. There's no transmitter on it. It's measuring 0.41 volts. That's how many volts are on the RSSI line. Now I have over here, FPV backpack and I'm going to plug that in. That will produce a very strong signal so that'll give us an idea of what the maximum signal we can expect from this setup is when we've got a very very strong signal. There we go, it's gone up to 1.06. 
So that's the maximum voltage when you've got a really, really strong signal. You can see my, um, get a bit more if I, maybe, if, oops, move this right up really close. Whoops, no, the wires come off. <laughs> there we go. We get right up, yeah. 1.069, 1.07 is the maximum. That's when it's right beside, we've got our antenna right beside the other antenna, 1.071. So there you go. Those are the range from, was it 0.4 roughly to about one. So it's a 0.6 volt range roughly. So we're going to look at that. We're going to see what difference these antennas make, how good they are by measuring the relative amount of strength we receive from each one. Just to show you what happens here, I'm going to take a little bit of a walk with this backpack and that, vol that voltage there should go down. Now hopefully my wireless mic will work because I am leaving the studio and we'll see what happens. I'm going to take the microphone out here, sorry the wireless video, I'm going to take it and put it outside the workshop which means it will actually be on the ground. Oh, open the door. So now it's sitting very low on the ground, hopefully you can still hear my audio. Come back in. So we've got a whole lot of iron from my hanger now between the transmitter. So yes, it's dropped right down to 0.64 volts. Quite a significant drop once I have taken the transmitter outside the building because it's an iron building and iron does a really good job of blocking 5.8 gigahertz signals. But let's go outside, let's set something up. Let's do some comparisons with these antennas. Okay, I've got the transmitter set up way, way, way down, down there, actually down there, where you can't see it, it's quite a way away. And at the moment I'm using the circular wireless cloverleaf and or yeah, skew planar antenna on the receiver as a, as a benchmark, as a, a zero gain figure, let's call it. And this is the figure, this is the numbers we're getting with that antenna, it says 0.78. So that's roughly, it'll change because you get reflections and things. So if I move my hand in and out, it's going to change it a bit. So I'll try and stand in the same place for each antenna. So that's 0.8. Let's say it's 0.8. That's for the no gain uh, clover leaf antenna. Right now I've got the circular wireless helical antenna on here. And I'm going to try and line it up to get the maximum signal by putting it straight at the, there you go. So it's about uh, 0.9. 0.9 is the figure I'm getting there. 0.899.9 using the, well, we might get a bit more, I'll just, yeah, there we go. Alignment is quite, obviously got a narrow beam because I can get 0 0.94, 0 0.94, and if I go off, I'm now about 10 degrees off axis, 15, 20 degrees, so actually the beam isn't too bad, it's not too bad, look at that. So we'll now try another antenna. Okay, here is the five turn helical from England. Try and get the best angle on here. And that's about as good as 0.876. About as good as we're going to get, is it? Oh no, there we go, 0 0.9. 0 0.903. So there you go, that's pretty close. Now as for beam angle, there's about 10 degrees. There's 15 degrees. So that drops off. Surprisingly, it seems to have a narrower focus than the other one. It's quite interesting. It's probably more to do with the base plate design than the antenna itself. Right, so that was the five turn helical. And here is our three turn helical. Try and get the best angle on that. Yeah, obviously that is down a bit on the other two. There we go, yep, we're getting 0 0.85, 0 0.86. But let's go to the 10 degrees off. Yep, 15 degrees, 20 degrees. It's just odd there, we get a, it's actually, Got another lobe there, that's about 20 degrees, that's about 15, so there's sort of a little side lobe on this. There we go, that's straight on, nearly 0.9. Then we go the other way, it's 10 degrees, 15 degrees, yeah, it's rather inconclusive really, but there you go. Okay, here we are, it's a bit later in the day, because I've had to do some running around to set things up. But what I've got here is the receiver that I set up before, running with the sort of the reference antenna which is that skew planar from circular wireless and down here I've got the video coming out of this receiver into the LCD screen here and I'll just zoom in so you can see it's actually quite snowy because I'm using the 20 decibel attenuator hopefully you can see on here that there's actually quite a bit of noise on that video signal because we're reaching the limits of the uh, sensitivity of the receiver it's still quite viable but this is the equivalent of the system having a better a 1.1 kilometer range with that 20 decibel attenuator in the in the circuit over here wherever I got it 
there it is. There's the attenuator and the receiver and the antenna. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start recording on the LCD and I'm going to overlay hopefully the LCD image in here as we try different receiver setup, as different antenna setups and you'll be able to see which works the best. So I'll just set this all up now and see what we can come up with. Okay so now we're recording on the LCD and I'm going to start playing around with those antennas so you can see what's going on. So I'll reposition the camera so you can see the angles we're looking at here because the transmitter, but long in the day, long shadows, the transmitter is way over there, right down by the far sign on that fence, which is quite a way away. Okay, let's have a look. Let's try some antennas. Right, at the moment it's the reference antenna, as I said. What I'm going to put on next is just the three decibel antenna, or sorry, the three turn helical. So, fortunately with receivers you can um, put the antennas off and on without having to worry about turning it off and on because it's not transmitting anything, won't burn anything out. So we've gone to snow on our LCD screen now, as you'd expect with no antenna. And here comes the three turn helical, if I can get it threaded on. What's going on here? Uh, SMA connectors, sometimes they screw on nicely, sometimes they don't. Yes, come on, you can do it. Here we go, got it threaded now. Okay, so now we've got a much crisper, much clearer image on the on the LCD. The snow is virtually gone, the noise is virtually gone. I'm going to turn, so you can see here, I will line this up with the thing. I'm going to turn the antenna, so hopefully you can see on the video what it's going to look like as we change the angle. Here we go, that angle there, we're starting to lose signal. It's at about 40 degrees. And out this side, get the same effect. Yeah, there we go. Not quite as much actually, I'm, maybe it's because I'm standing, yes, it's because the signal's reflecting off me. But there you go, at about 45 degrees, it becomes unusable, okay? That would be at one kilometer. So let's change to the other antenna now. That was, remember that was the three turn helical. Now I'm going to put on the five turn helical. And that should give us a, an even better picture, one would hope, given it's got more turns. Point it in the right direction, there we go. Again, the picture now is crystal clear. I'm going to do the, the angle, which hopefully you'll be able to see. So there we go, 30 degrees. There we go, it's about, yeah, it's a little bit, as you'd expect, it's a little bit more directional. It's about five degrees small, yeah, this way it's even worse. So this definitely has a narrower beam, but it has more gain and it gives us a clearer signal. So we'll whisk that off and we'll put on, sorry about the noise, there's an aeroplane down here at the moment, put on the circular wireless antenna which should give us the best results because it is, there's more turns and there we go, that's crystal clear, that's beautiful. Let's try for our angle, yeah and yeah there we go, it's actually a bit of a null point just there, although it's surprisingly good out to the side, look at this, this antenna's there, which is about 60 degrees, we're still getting a usable image. And out this way, again, still a surprisingly good image. So it shows you that you'd expect this to have the narrowest beam, but actually it's, it's wider than the other two antennas, possibly because it's just better made. It's a better quality antenna, but it's a really expensive one. So there we go, that was the helical antenna shootout. And I've got to say, they all performed very well. The one I didn't test, the one I didn't put on the bench, was the Chinese one, which I've left out there, um, because it was left-hand polarized. I'll do another video, another video showing you what happens when you try and use a left-hand polarized antenna at one end and a right-hand polarized antenna at the other, because it's not pretty. And it'll also give us a chance to check out that um, Chinese antenna, see if it actually does any good at all, despite its relatively poor manufacturing quality. So there you go, what would I say? Which would you buy? Which should you buy? Well, I don't know, it's really up to you. If you've got the money, when obviously you can't go past the circular wireless in terms of performance, it really does give a lot of gain and a surprisingly wide beam, which is you know, a testimony to the quality of design and manufacture. The one from the UK here, that for the money is obviously really good value. It does the job, it massively improves your range, and it's got an adequately wide beam. Of course, if you use it with diversity, you won't really care because you can have several of these, or you can have a cloverleaf on top to give you that close-up um, all-round coverage. This one here, well, it's got a much wider beam than the five-turn one, 
And, you know, it's, I, I commend people for giving it a go. And I mean, this, it works. It works. It'll give you much better range than your standard cloverleaf. So if you're looking for a, you know, a helical that's got a reasonable gain and a reasonably wide beam, then this is an option that's cheaper than this and it may be more affordable for you. There you go. It's also more compact, of course. If you have this on your glasses, not quite as hard as having this on your video glasses. It's a bit long and you might poke someone's eye out. I don't know. So there you go. There's no losers really in this. These all work really well. I'm very surprised, very impressed with these helical antennas that I've been sent to review. Um, it's hard to say a bad word about them. So there you go. Now, I will be doing a follow-up video here. I'm going to do a video from three kilometres, actual three kilometres away. Now, a simulated range, a range of one kilometre with that 20 decibel attenuator. But I'm going to do an actual three kilometre range test. As you know, I can't do it with a model for various reasons. The first of all being, in most countries, it's against the policies of the airspace regulators for you to fly beyond visual line of sight. They believe that if you fly beyond visual line of sight, you may get hit by a plane because you can't necessarily see if there's an aeroplane coming or in the vicinity. FPV, low resolution cameras, narrow field of view, even with, you know, wide angle, still narrow field of view. You can't hear an oncoming plane, if you, even if you've got a microphone because of the wind noise. So yeah, there is a concern about your situational awareness, which is why, of course, I'm working on the, set. well, I was working on the sense and avoid. But as we know, certain parties, don't like what I'm doing for whatever reason, trying to stop me doing it left, right and centre. You'd think I was killing babies, but I'm not. So I'm going to try and keep bringing you these videos, but how much longer, I don't know. I mean, people are working really hard to put me out of business right now for reasons I cannot fathom. But I will do the three kilometre range test because we have a hill out here, a little hill three kilometres away exactly. So I'll put the transmitter up there and we'll have a look at it from the ground with all these antennas and we'll see what the three kilometre looks like with each of those antennas. That's in a video that's coming up. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you uh, have any comments or questions, put them on the bottom and I'll see you again very soon on RC Model Reviews because now I'm getting back to the bench.